Hello, a great welcome to this series on earthquake resistant design of buildings and structures explained through the caudal portions contained in ASCE SCI 722. So today we are at topic number 5 and will address an important topic that is the seismic design category. So I would request all of you to subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the right corner of the screen so that uh, you'll get intimation regarding as and when new videos are uploaded okay fine so let us get into the concept of a seismic design category if you refer to our earlier presentations you will find that we have covered in detail the various parameters under seismic design criteria and these parameters included risk category, importance factors, site classification, definition of a risk targeted maximum considered earthquake MCER, and finally design spectral acceleration parameters. So we are yet to address one more parameter that is seismic design category. And this is the topic that we will talk in detail today. Okay, fine. So let us get into the concept of a seismic design category, popularly known as SDC. The concept of a seismic design category SDC, it integrates both the levels of a seismic hazard and the consequence of a structure failure based on risk category to define explicitly the design and construction requirements. So this means that the definition of SDC considers two things. First one is the seismic hazard levels at the site and secondly the risk category of the structure. And these two requirements are adequately integrated in order to draft or define the specific design and construction requirements for structures. Now what are the various SDCs? The SDCs, that is the seismic design category, it varies from SDCA. What does SDCA indicates? It represents the lowest hazard with little to no anticipated damage due to earthquakes. And the category goes to the extreme, that is SDCs E and F. And they represent basically very high hazard and the possibility of significant earthquake damage even to robust structures. So from this definition itself, it's very clear that the SDC definition, it integrates both the hazard level as well as the anticipated damage. And altogether we have six seismic design categories, that is category A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, you may ask, what does a larger SDC mean? A larger SDC, it means a lot to the designers and it also means a lot of requirements. So this means additional requirement for design and construction. It also involves detailed geotechnical investigations. Maybe that you may have to focus on liquefaction studies, stop, slope, stability, etc more considerations to the selection of an appropriate seismic force resisting system popularly known as SFRS. So if your structure is assigned a larger SDC it does mean that you have to be very particular in the selection of an appropriate SFRS. Then a proper consideration of structural irregularity is very much required for a larger SDC and finally a larger SDC will also result in imposing height limitations. So by reading this, it is very clear that a larger SDC means a larger stringent requirements both pertaining to the design as well as the construction. Now let us see how the structures are assigned the various seismic design categories. First we will consider the basis for 
the SDCE category. And category E involves risk category 1, 2 or 3 structures located where the mapped spectral response acceleration parameter at one second period, we know that it is S1, is greater than or equal to 0.75. So remember, for category E, as far as the hazard level is concerned, the requirement is S1 is greater than or equal to 0.75. And it essentially involves risk category 1, 2 or 3. Now let us discuss about category F. Just like category E, the seismic hazard level is exactly the same. That is, the spectral response acceleration period S1 greater than or equal to 0.75. So what's the difference? Category F includes risk category 4 structures. You know that risk category 4 is much higher compared to the category 1, 2 or 3. So for category E and F, we are using the parameter S1 for defining which category it is and also the corresponding risk category, whether it is 1, 2, 3 or 4. Now, if we find that a particular structure cannot be assigned either category E or category F, then how should you proceed for the definition of SDC? So we have to check whether it belongs to A, B, C or D. Now this can be done using the tables 1161 and 1162 of AAC 722. Remember, these tables use altogether different parameters. For example, table 1161, it use SDS, which is we know that it is a design spectral response acceleration at a short period, whereas table 1162 uses SD1, that is spectral response acceleration parameters at a period of one second. Now we have to find out the seismic design category based on 1161 or 11 and 1162 and assign the severe of the two as the correct SDC for the structure. Now let me take you to table 1161 and 1162. As we have already discussed, table 11.61, it uses the parameter SDS, that is a short period response acceleration parameter as a basis for the assigning of SDC. Now as you can see that, on the left side, a set of SDS values are given and on the right side, we have two groups of risk category. In the first group, we have 1, 2 or 3 category and the, in the next column, we have the category risk category 4. It's the maximum risk associated category. Now, as you can see that, for example, suppose in a particular site, we have the SDC is equal to 0.25. We obviously know that it lies between 0.167 and 0.33. So we have two possibilities. It can be either B or C. Now, if the structure comes under risk category 1, 2 or 3, we shall assign an SDC of B. On the other hand, if the risk category is 4, we'll assign the structure to SDC of C. So as you can see that in many cases, the SDC associated with the risk category 4 is one step more than that of 1, 2 or 3 and that is very specific at larger values of SDS. For example, here you can see that for 1, 2, 3, the risk category is B, here it is C and here it is for 1, 2, 3, the SDC is a C whereas for category 4, it is SDC D. So, this shows the importance of the risk category in assigning the SDC. Now let us discuss about 11, table 1162. You can see that the format for 11, table 11.62 11 is almost the same as 11.61 except that instead of SDS, it uses the parameter SD1. That is the one second period response acceleration parameter. And here you will find that the values of SD1 are listed. And in the same way, the risk categories are also listed. So 
It means once you know the value of SDS and ST1 as well as the risk category, you will be able to obtain the SDC based on table 1161 as well as table 1162 and then finally you have to select the severe of these two categories as the final SDC assigned to the structure. Now we have seen that table 1161 and 1162 can be readily used in order to assign a particular SDC to a structure. We can also use the same ASE hazard tool which we have used in the calculation of the response spectrum in order to find out the respective SDC. So here I have listed two examples. In both cases, the site is Atlanta, Texas. And in the first example, I have assigned a risk category of 2. In the second example, you can see that I have assigned a risk category of 4. So in the first example, the hazard tool provided me an SDC of B. And in the second example, obviously, as it is category 4, it has provided one higher than SDC category, that is C. You can also obtain the same result using table 1161 and 1162. For example, if you apply table 1161, for example 1, it provides SDC A, whereas table 1162, if you apply to example 1, it provides you an SDC, B, SDC of B, which means that the correct one will be the crit critical of the two, that is seismic design category B, it is the same result. Now in a similar way, I have applied table 1161 and 11.62 to the second example as well. Application of the 6.1 table provided me SDCA and the table 6.2 provided me SDCC. So obviously I have to select the critical that is my correct SDC will be SDCC and that is matches with that is provided by the hazard tool that is SDC will be C. Okay fine so what i remember is that uh, asc 722 do not provide us any maps regarding the sdcs but uh, if you look into the ibc current as the latest version 2024 it provides for many locations the sdc maps for example here is shown a typical uh, sdc map you can see that the color coding is used to identify the sdc category for any location so you can see that for example if you are having the risk category 1, 2 or 3 this color coding will define the SDC, E, D, C, B, A etc. Whereas if the structure is in category 4, risk category 4 then the color coding that pertains to F, D, C, B, A etc. So this means that using the color coding and the risk category you will be able to exactly locate for a particular location the corresponding SDC to a structure. So I think that's all regarding this very important concept that's SDC. If you have any kind of a query, please let me know through the comment box and uh, fine. So thanks a lot. Have a nice day.